Manitoba is still reeling from the deadly bus crash late last week that left 15 dead and 10 more in hospital. As of this morning, five patients are in critical care. According to the RCMP, autopsies are underway to identify the victims from the crash. As people are grieving this tragedy, an outpouring of support is being felt across the province. Here to discuss more on this is Manitoba Premier Heather Stephenson. Premier, thanks so much for joining us. Hi, David. You were at an event in Carberry on Saturday. What, what were people saying to you when you were in the town? Yeah, well, I went out to their uh, annual firefighter barbecue on Saturday just to pop in and um, just say thank you to all of those first responders who were first on the scene. And, uh, you know, I can tell you it was overwhelming, the support that they received from right across the province and even out of province. Uh, they had more, more than, I think, 800 people that came by that day. And I think it's a, it's a show of support of how Manitoba comes together as a community. Uh, Carberry w was near where it happened, but Dauphin seems to be the epicenter of the loss. That's where most of the people were from. Have you spoken to That's people right. in that community? Have you been there yet, Premier? Yes, I've spoken to um, the mayor uh, of Dauphin, as well as the mayor of the, or the Reeve of the RM of Dauphin, as well as RMLA, Brad Mikuleski up there. Um, we, we are letting the families grieve right now as we're going through a process right now, but I have told them whatever they need from us, we are there to help them through this horrific time. Our, we are there and our, you know, our, our hearts go out to those family members who have lost loved ones, and our prayers are with those who are fighting for their lives in, in hospital right now. Have you got a sense from the, the leadership of the community what they might need and, and what support your government might be able to offer that community? Yeah, we're giving them the time to sort of figure that out and what they need. And we have offered them any support that they need. And I know they've been receiving overwhelming support from people across the province, people across the country. Um, other premiers have, have reached out. Other mayors have, have, have reached out. The prime minister... Um, we just know that uh, we're there for, for Dauphin and uh, we're grieving as a province right now. Earlier today, you mentioned that Manitoba Health will make resources immediately available to those who are affected. I mean, what will that look like? Are we talking psychological help, grief counselling? What are we talking there, Premier? Yeah, we are talking about uh, those who want to go and live, uh, visit their loved ones in hospital. We will offer, um, you know, food and accommodation to those individuals. Uh, who want to go and, and travel to Winnipeg to Brandon to visit their loved ones. We are all also offering supports to our first responders who are on the scene to make sure that they get the help that they need as well. And we're offering any supports for anyone in, in Dauphin or first responders uh, out there that need our help and support. Our message is we're there for you. Okay, I, I'd like to switch, if I could, to the, to the road itself. And I wonder from your perspective, what needs to be done with this intersection? Does it need to be changed to make it safer? Well, first of all, I think it's very important that the RCMP continues to do their investigation and all of this, and that will be a, a part of it. But I can tell you that whenever, whenever there's an incident on our roadways in the province, there's always an internal review that takes place. So that review is taking place right now. Um, we'll let the RCMP go through its investigation. We will then look. There's, this is obviously a, a significant accident that took place. And uh, if there's more resources that are needed to... Um, to determine what is needed for, for the roadways, we will do that. We will bring in specialists. Uh, we'll bring in whatever it takes to ensure that uh, we put what is first and foremost, which is the safety of people on our highways. When you look at it uh, from the video and, and pictures that we've all seen now of this intersection, uh, you know, it's just you, you've got a stop sign on the north and south side to, to cross a high-speed highway, and that's it, and it's four lanes with extra space with a median in the middle. I mean, do you need to upgrade uh, a lot of these crossings to make them a little bit safer? Because it looks like a tenuous crossing uh, at the best of times because the traffic there seems fairly heavy, Premier. Well, again, I don't want to predetermine what the RCMP investigation uh, comes out with, whether or not the highway was, uh, was part of the challenge here or not. Um, you know, we'll allow that process to take place. But obviously, if there's anything we can do, we'll do our internal review. We will continue to bring in specialists to see if there's anything we can do to make the roadway uh, safer. 
Uh, but again, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves here. We need to allow that RCMP investigation to take place. No, and I appreciate the need for the RCMP to deal with this specific incident. But uh, since this has happened, uh, I've seen a lot of people from Manitoba saying that these grade level highway crossings that are quite common on the prairies, quite common in Manitoba, are, are something people have been concerned about for quite some time. So do you think this is something that more broadly, beyond this terrible incident, this is something that Manitoba needs to look at? Well, more broadly, we are, we've taken a look at it and we are investing. We're making uh, significant record historic investments in our roadways, uh, $2.5 billion over the next five years specific to our highways. You recall that we just announced uh, the twinning of the highway um, from, uh, from Falcon Lake to the Ontario border. We are making those investments in our highways. We will continue to look at where uh, those investments are needed and, uh, and make sure that we're, you know, and safety is obviously our number one issue when it comes to this. So we'll prioritize according to safety. Just on the investigation, and I know the coroner's office, it's doing its work and police are doing their work. Do you have any updated timeline and when you think people will know um, when, when the identification of the remains, for example, might be complete and when people can, can, can begin the process of, of saying goodbye to the loved ones that they lost mm -hmm. in this terrible incident? Well, I can tell you there's, there's a lot of questions out there and, and people are wanting to know you know what the answers are to those questions and we need to let the process unfold. I can tell you that uh, we want to get those answers to those individuals as quickly as we possibly can. Uh, I know the RCMP is working very closely with the Chief Medical Examiner uh, and with Shared Health to ensure that as we get more information, we will get that out as quickly as possible to the families and as quickly as possible to, to the public. Uh, again, first and foremost, our thoughts are with the families. Manitoba Premier Heather Stephenson, thank you for your time today. Thanks, David.